On North Korea, the Secretary and Foreign Minister talked through upcoming plans to convene the United Nations Commanding Sending States meeting in January. We As you know, Secretary Tillerson is in Ottawa, making his first trip to Canada as the Secretary of State. Secretary Tillerson is joined on this first trip by Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary Paco Palmieri. Uh, many of you know him, and they were welcomed by Ambassador Kelly Kraft. While in Ottawa, the Secretary is meeting with Foreign Minister Freeland and several other senior Canadian officials as part of our ongoing and close relationship between our two countries. During the meetings, they discussed a range of issues, including mutual prosperity, defense and security, and our shared concerns on global issues, including North Korea and the ongoing situation in Ukraine. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says talks with North Korea will not be possible unless the regime shows it's ready to talk. Speaking in Ottawa after a meeting with the Canadian Foreign Minister, Tillerson said the pressure campaign on North Korea will continue until the regime is willing to give up its nuclear weapons and allow verification as such. However, he also stressed that the aim of sanctions and pressure was ultimately to lead North Korea to talks. Tillerson and his Canadian counterpart also announced that the U.S. and Canada will co-host a foreign minister's meeting in Vancouver next month to further discuss the North Korean nuclear issue. It will include countries that were involved in the Korean War, such as South Korea and the U.S., and other traditional sending countries, such as India and Sweden. On North Korea, the Secretary and Foreign Minister talked through upcoming plans to convene the United Nations Commanding Sending States meeting in January. We still don't have the specifics nailed down, so I won't have anything additional for you on that, but as soon as I do, I will certainly bring it to you. That group will include South Korea, Japan, and other key affected countries to discuss how the global community can address North Korea's threat to international peace. Lastly, they spoke about the importance of border security and our mutual economic relationship. Oh, a lot, I, a lot of I'd you like do. Ask okay. About DPRK. Yeah. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, McMaster today gave an interview in which he said now is not the time for talking, mm -hmm. and uh, he seemed to suggest that uh, the United States may have to forcibly denuclearize the Korean Peninsula if North Korea does not denuclearize itself. It seemed to be an implicit rejection of the diplomacy that the Secretary has been doing. I, heard, I was wondering I what the General State Master Department... McMaster, I heard General McMaster's interview this morning. I don't recall him uh, saying what, how you just characterized it. Um, I know our official administration policy, our administration policy is uh, we would certainly like to sit down, be in the place where we can have talks with North Korea, but we are nowhere near that point yet. Our administration policy has not changed. We continue to push for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. There are many, many other nations around the world that agree with us on that front. We would like to have the opportunity to talk with North Korea when the time is right. And I want to be clear about that. The time is not right right now. Hi. All right. Good. Uh, South Korean President Moon. Uh, Can we said, come back to South Korea? Stick with North Korea. Uh, this is also North Korea. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, they said that the U.S. and ROK are considering postponing uh, military exercises until after the Winter Olympics. Um, so, and obviously, part of this reason would be North Korea. So, I'm, my question is, how seriously is the U.S. considering this? Well, proposal? I think that would be a DoD issue. Um, but I can tell you that we have joint exercises that are legal. We do them around the world. We do them. Uh, with many other countries, and those are to maintain our readiness and to be sh um, able to make sure that we are ready in the event of uh, a worst-case scenario. But that's something that would just be handled by DOD. Okay. Anything uh, else in ROK? Korea, China. Korea. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hi, Connor. Just as, uh, White official said, um, Tom Bossert, the Homeland Security Advisor, said that President Trump has used just about every lever you could use short of starving the people of North Korea to death to change their behavior. So we don't have a lot of room left to apply pressure to change their behavior. If that is the case, um, how much more room do you have then? And how, how can you achieve results with this peaceful pressure campaign? Yeah. Especially again, as you say, you know, now is not the right time to meet, but HR McMaster also said recently that we're running out of time. Yeah. So, you know, look, diplomacy is what we do in this building. And that's not going to change. We will continue to push ahead with the peaceful pressure campaign, the maximum pressure campaign. Every day we're speaking with other countries uh, about having those countries do more to try to uh, stem the tide of money going into North Korea. 
So that hasn't changed. We're pushing ahead. We had some good news come out of Thailand. They're doing uh, less in conjunction with, uh, with North Korea than they had in the past. I'd have to look up the specific details. But my point is there are a lot of countries doing a lot to contribute to this. Uh, last week at the United Nations, uh, uh, Secretary Tillerson called on countries to go beyond the scope of the UN Security Council resolutions and agreements to do their part to choke off that money supply to North Korea. So regardless of what uh, others in the U.S. government say, we're pushing ahead with peaceful diplomacy, maximum pressure. So you think there is more? You would disagree? You think there is more? I think there is more that we can do, yeah. And, and that's just like we call on Russia and China every single day to do more to, um, to, do more to put pressure on North Korea. Anything else on that? Can I follow up on that? Yeah, so sure. Bossert was talking specifically about the cyber attack. Oh, he was. Okay. And so I, I did not see his comments. No, I read fine. a couple just, of them, but I'm just trying to. So um, the pressure campaign is that just targeting North Korea for its nuclear program and its missile activity, or is it also trying to? you know, tamp down on them for what they're doing in the cyber sphere as well. If it is with regard to cyber, I'm not familiar with that. One of the things we focus on here in that building, and cyber I think would be handled out of DHS or Department of Justice, uh, perhaps even DOD. But we focus here on the money that goes into North Korea that North Korea then ends up using to fund its illegal nuclear and ballistic missile programs. So that's what we stay focused on. So uh, the State Department won't be involved in any um, unilateral consequence. Uh, what I said is I'm just not familiar with that part of it. Um, I just have to refer you to DHS at this point. If we have anything more, uh, an angle that the State Department is specifically involved with, I'll certainly let you know. Okay. DPRK. Yeah. Okay. Jenny, hi. Thank you, Heather. As you already know that uh, five Chinese uh, combat airplanes flew over in the South Korea's air defense identification zones. How do you uh, uh, comment on this? I, I'm sorry, t t five uh, Chinese uh, combat airplanes flew over in South Korean air defense identification zone. So how do you comment I'm sorry, on this? I just this? don't have anything for you on that. I'd refer you back to uh, South Korea or to uh, the government of China. Do you, do you think this action is like threatening South Korea. And I, I just China. I don't have any specifics on on that for okay, you, so you? I I don't want to comment on it because I just don't have any specifics for you. Okay. 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 Hey, Thanks. Harry. Yeah. So just a second longer. Wait, Afghanistan. North Korea. North Korea. Oh, North Korea. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Secretary Tillerson pretty much signaled a willingness to have talks with North Korea recently, saying as much, you know, as Hey, you want to talk about weather? Let's talk about weather. I wanted to ask if you reached out to the North Koreans directly via diplomatic channels, either in New York or someplace else, to suggest having talks other than making those public you know, announcements. First, let me tell you, our U.S. government policy has not changed. We are not going to be sitting down for talks with North Korea at this time. They are showing no interest. They are showing no willingness to sit down and have conversations with the U.S. government. In terms of your question about whether or not any U.S. government official or representative sat down and had a talk with North Korea while uh, at the United Nations, the answer is absolutely no. The Secretary did address publicly uh, the North Korean permanent representative, and uh, he said to him, uh, among other things, any notion that the source of tensions on the peninsula are the fault of one party, because uh, some have uh, blamed the United States uh, for the deplorable conditions in North Korea. There's one party that has carried out illegal detonation of nuclear devices. There is only one party that continues to launch intercontinental ballistic missiles in violation of UN Security Council resolutions, overflying other so sovereign nations, Japan, threatening civil aviation security because these launches are undertaken with no notification. So the Secretary addressed him publicly, but the U.S. government has had no other conversations. Okay. Uh, shall we move on to another issue? What okay. about China? Okay. All right. So just calling China and the Russia the rival powers in the uh, so, uh, Start your question again. I'm sorry. I mean, my question is that just the calling China and the Russia the rival powers in the national strategy uh, reports. So. Does it signal any policy change from the U.S. government towards the countries? About the uh, national security strategy? Yes. I, I think I would just go back to uh, the President and his team and our folks at, at the National Security Council outlined four pillars, uh, four pillars of our national security strategy. And among those are uh, just, you know, what, what we've talked about already. 
um, taking a look at other nations and determining other nations and where we have areas of agreement and where we have areas of disagreement and how we will, it may seem messy to some people, but we'll work together with some countries in areas where we have uh, agreement and we will continue to call out countries and um, in areas where we have a disagreement. So I, I think I've stated that already and the President's uh, comments were clear.